Hello and welcome to this audio edition of the Player Spotlight. I'm Tyler Rowland, and this episode is one that's special to me in a way, in so many ways. And I don't like to normally toot my own horn, but I mean, in just how far this show has expanded. I mean, we've had several McDonald's All-Americans on here, the chair of the All McDonald's All-American Committee. I mean, several coaches with state championships. We've had a couple former NBA players, and we've had three All-Americans all at the collegiate level. And the third one is one that, ironically, was the first person to ever come on this show from West Carter and playing now at Pikeville, averaging 20 points, three assists per game. And her numbers are impressive, to say the least. And shooting, I mean, almost in 50, 40, 90, 50% from the field, 42% from three, 86% from the line. I'm proud to introduce to you Allie Stone. And Allie, it's so good to see you on here again. And first off, um, how have you been? Um, it's been, a, I mean, quite a journey you've had at Pikeville. Yes, uh, I'm glad to be on here. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah, it's just been great. It's been, I've been home for a few weeks now and feel like I've just been taking it easy. Everything's been going really fast for me the past past year, I guess. And let's talk a little bit about your journey starting out. Um, I mean, you go to Wes Carter, I mean, and, you know, and you won a lot of honors and accolades. I mean, you did the you did the little things right, like defensively. I mean, you knew but you always were in the right spot. I mean, you did the other little thing, like you made your free throws at a hot, such a high rate. I mean, which you still do. I mean, 86%, very impressive. Um, talk about your journey. At, at, now that that's in the rear view mirror at West Carter and just the, some of the memories that you have from there that stand out. Um, yeah, definitely. West Carter will always have a special place in my heart. You know, I have made lifelong friends there. Um, my teachers, my coaches, everybody's always been so good to me. And, you know, I spent six years there as a, a varsity starter. And um, we won a lot of games. We won a lot of championships. And for me to just be able to be a part of that there um, is really special to me, especially considering, you know, the rich history that West Carter has. So, just to be able to know that my name's up there too, it's really special to me. Mm -hmm. You mentioned your co coaches. Let's talk about Faith Khan a little bit. Of course, Faith, who, I mean, was a heck of a good player herself back in the day too. And um, talk about Faith and just the bond that you all have and maybe something that you learned from her that a quality that you carry on to this day. Yes, we have a very, very good relationship. I love her to death. Um, you know, she came in as our head coach when I was a sophomore. So I had her for three seasons. And, you know, we still talk to this day. We still keep up with each other. And, you know, I feel like she was really just a blessing to come in as our coach because, um, you know, she knew exactly what all of us needed. And, you know, it was her first coaching, too. So we were all learning together. But um, she was the best thing that could have happened for us, I think. Um she she always uh, let us know that she cared about us and, you know, everything like that, that she loved us. And, you know, I think I learned – I did. I learned a lot from her um, and just the way that she carried herself, you know, while she was coaching and while she wasn't coaching, you know, just everything. She she really just means a lot to me. Yeah, Faith seems to have that personality. Like, she's one that can be – you know, she's got that leadership ability that – you know that she's somebody that's, you know, you know, to be looked up to and, you know, draws attention, but also somebody that's, um, that can also relate to the players very well. And um, talk about that some, and maybe at, um, at Wes Carter, when you think of faith, um, what, what's one of maybe your favorite memories, whether that's winning a championship or um, even a funny memory at practice or something, what's a favorite memory you have? um with her um well there's gotta, there's got to be so many um she's definitely you know one of my role models for sure um but the thing that is sticking out in my head right now is when we won uh the district championship my senior year and it was kind of like a 
like a full circle moment for me and her, I think, because, you know, ever since she came in, we, we won every district championship. And then that was just like, you know, a good way for us to go out. And, you know, also um, the night that I broke the record at West Carter, the scoring record, um, she was the first person to run out and give me a hug. And it was just so surreal, everything she'd done for me in, in that time. Mm -hmm. And but you mentioned a couple of your teachers at West Carter. Um, talk about um, talk about a couple of the teachers you had there that you really liked. Um, West Carter has a lot of great teachers. Um, a lot of them, you know, made an impact on me. Um, I, I, I don't even know that I could single any of them out because they were all just so great to me. Um, all of them, like, you know, let you know that they cared about you and cared about your learning and, I would not trade where I went to high school for anything. That's awesome. And, and yeah, always good when you have multiple teachers like that, that, um, you know, that, that you can get along with and really learn from. And um, let's shift the focus a little bit to, to Pikeville now. Um, coming in, I mean, as a freshman, you were thrown right in the fire. And you responded, of course. I mean, you averaged 13 points a game last year. And talk a little bit about your freshman season. And first off, before we get into the basketball, the transition to college, what was that like for you coming in? Like, did you move in? Oh, I take it you probably moved in over the summer and started practicing. Um, what was that like? Um, so I actually moved in about mid-August. Um, and it was definitely an adjustment, I think, you know, it's just, it's hard moving away from home for anybody, or for me it was at least. And so um, going to Pikes, well, just, it just kind of felt like where I was supposed to be. You know, I went and visited a bunch of places and, um, you know, just ended up choosing Pikes well and moving in and everything. I had to learn how to, you know, essentially be on my own and, you know, without my family there. And that was hard in, at the beginning, but you know, just the people there making you feel welcome and, you know, getting into basketball, which is where I was probably most comfortable at, um, really helped me out. Mm -hmm. And when you started playing basketball at that level, um, what was something that um, you felt like you had to make a change to adapt to or something that was a new challenge for you? Um, the college game definitely goes faster than the high school game does. Um, everything's sped up, even in the half court and transition, everything is faster. So not only do you have to, you know, think faster, you have to be in better shape than you were in high school. And so I think that was a big, like, moment for me in practice. Like, first couple of weeks, I was like, wow, like, I'm going to have to keep up. And so um, – that was a big adjustment, and another adjustment was the shot clock. Um, I don't – people people think that's not a big adjustment, but, you know, all of a sudden you're just playing basketball, and then there's five seconds left for you to get a shot up, and it's like, wow, like, I'm going to have to think about my shot selection more now. So that, those were probably the two biggest things. And physicality is a lot of different – speed and physicality is just on a completely different level than it, than it was in high school. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because, I mean, you're looking at it coming in. and um, Yeah, that definitely would be a, a big change. And talk a little bit about um, coming in, coming in, um, playing under Coach um, Coach Williams. And you're looking at somebody that's had, I mean, had some success there at Pikeville and has, is no stranger to the NAI tournament. And, I mean, of course, it's a big honor. I think you've gotten there both of your years and, I mean, big honor out of, I mean, 200-some schools to get that opportunity. Um, talk a little bit about him and what it's been like and and, and playing for him. Oh, yeah, definitely. Coach Williams, um, ever since he started recruiting me, you know, he just made me feel welcome and made me feel special that um, he would want me to play for him. And, you know, just getting there and getting comfortable with his system and, you know, him leading practices and everything. It was it was a pretty smooth transition, I would say. Um, you know, he cares about us, and, you know, we, we all can tell that. And it's, it's really just uh, – it's a blessing to be able to play under somebody like that, you know, that's had so much success and that, you know, we, we know he's there for us. And 
that, that was really special to me coming in. Mm-hmm. And you had a lot of schools recruiting you, Allie, for good reason. And when you when you were in that process, when was the moment that like you knew like that? Okay, Pikeville is going to be the place where I play. Uh, yeah, you know that was a very very stressful time because you know it's like where you're going to spend the next four years of your life. So um, I, I committed pretty late. I, I think I committed in March, and uh, it was it was kind of funny. I was I was honestly just like sitting at my house, like, and I was just like I just made the decision. I was like, this is where I'm going to go. Like, felt like home. I visited some places, and I, I felt I liked the campus there. I liked the people there, and I like, I like Coach Williams and, you know, I just felt like I was going to be happy there. Mm -hmm. And let's talk a little bit about the 16th region, um, because that seems to be something that Coach Williams has hit quite heavily on is is recruiting in that area. And, I mean, you all averaged, I mean, you were one of the nation's leaders in scoring, I believe, at around 82 points a game. Um, When you take that average, and break it down, 45% of that comes from 16th region players. You, Rachel Bush, Julia Parker, and Abby Atkins. Talk about just what it feels like to to be representing at that level because, I mean, you have had some big wins in your time, time at Pikeville. And to see, I mean, the 16th region shine like this has to be – has to feel pretty incredible. Right, yes. Yeah. Um, you know, I definitely made us made us feel proud, you know, um, coming together on the same team, you know, obviously it's going to be a little weird at first because, you know, in high school we're, we're made to be like, you know, I'm going to beat you, but, you know, getting to be on the same team is awesome. You know, get, I've played against, uh, Julia forever and, uh, finally getting to play a couple of years with her was, was pretty awesome. And, you know, I played, I played AU with Abby and getting so we already knew each other and you know finally getting to play with her again was nice and you know Rachel Rachel really stepped up this year she really done really good coming in as a freshman and just being able to you know get that championship together this year was really special for all of us and let's talk about that that conference championship you had I mean you had a double took I believe it was a double overtime battle I believe to get that and um I mean just to pull that out had to be gosh I mean describe that tournament and the process and not just so much the basketball perspective but maybe the travel and maybe something you did you know maybe a fun stop you had at the trip or something of that nature when you got a chance for a breather Um, talk about that experience and what it was like for you yeah um the conference tournament is like a whole different monster like it's just like we play it at Kingsport in the in the convention center, and so all the teams are staying in the same hotel where we play at. We're playing in the conference rooms, and it's it's just funny because you see the team you're about to play get on the elevator with you, and it's just like, well, it's just crazy, and um, it's really hard because you know we played, th- I think we played three games in three days. If that if that's not right, we played three games in four days, but. Either way, we had to quick turnarounds, and you know we had we didn't have a very easy way to get there. We were the four seed coming in, so our first game mm-hmm. we had the five seed that we had to beat, and then second game we played one seed. We played Brian, and we beat them. And then for the championship, we played Reinhardt, which was the two seed, and double overtime there. So it was really special for us because you know, coming in, we were an underdog for that and to prove everyone wrong and to get there and to win that was definitely crazy and very mentally challenging because, you know, fatigue is setting in by that time. And, you know, we're just grinding it out one more day, one more game. And just to be able to do that and to get to where we needed to be there was awesome. One of my favorite memories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You all had a, I mean, you had a strong, start to the season but you also had a point Allie when you lost I think five of nine and looking at it um, when was the moment that it sort of started to you felt like everything just started to click for you as a team 
Yeah, um, definitely. For sure, like, the season's definitely a marathon. Like, you're going to go through some lows. And, you know, I remember the exact point that you were talking about. And, you know, we just had some conversations as a team just saying, like, you know, listen, we we got to get it together if we're going to get to where we want to be. And, you know, we had we had to come together and start, you know, practicing every day like it was a championship game. And when we got everybody on that same page, everybody working towards one thing, that's when it kind of, you know, it all comes together for us. And we, we know that we can do it at that point. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, and Allie, um, you were named by the Women's Basketball Coaches Association and All-American this season. How did that feel to you? Uh, it, was, it was definitely an honor. Um, I was so blessed to receive that, and I'm so thankful for that. Um, yeah, I just found out a couple weeks, a few weeks ago probably, and, um, you know, it was just so surreal for me because that, that had been a goal of mine, you know, in college, not necessarily this year, but just in college in general, I, that was a goal of mine, and, you know, you know, give credit to my teammates, my coaches, um, everybody that helped me to get there, you know, um, credit. First of all, I've got to give credit to God, you know, for keeping me healthy and giving me the talent for that. But, um, you know, everybody around me helped me to get that. So, um, yeah, it was pretty awesome for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what was your, like, when you first heard the announcement, this is the question I asked Trinity Rowe last night on, um, on the, about winning Miss Basketball, like, what was your reaction, like, the moment you heard that? Um, I actually got a FaceTime call from Coach Williams and AJ, my assistant coach, and, um, you know, they were showing me my plaque and everything that they had just gotten, and I, I was I was kind of speechless, actually. They were like, can you see it? Like, can you see what we're showing you? And I was like, yeah, 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 like, I see it. Um, it, it was crazy because, you know, I thought maybe I'd missed out on it this year and then that was going to give me more fuel for next year, you know, but, um, yeah, just being able to get it. I was kind of speechless. I kind of was, I didn't really know what to say. And if someone's watching you, because I mean, you've got a lot of people, I mean, your name's forever etched in West Carter's history. When you see your game and just the fundamentals, the discipline, like I said, I mean, you weren't far from, 50, 40, 90, and, I mean, even coming close to that is almost unheard of at any level. What advice would you give to somebody who aspires to be like, like you? Um, just, just keep getting better. Keep working. Um, you can never get in the gym enough, and you're never too good to do the little things. You know, um, getting recruited by college, you know, everybody Everybody can score at this level, but, you know, what sets you apart is, like, the details, the, you know, your defense, things like that. Um, and, yeah, like, you're never too good to stop getting better. You can always do something better. And so I think with that attitude and that mindset, um, there's really no limit to how good someone can be. Mm-hmm. And now for some questions to get to know you better, Allie. Um, we'll shift the topic a bit. Um, first off, um, and I know, and that just for fun, a lot, because I know some people are undecided even um, for um, I was. Um, what, what, the, what are you majoring in? I'm majoring in health and human performance. Um, so it's like pretty much like a pre-track to go to physical therapy school. That's pretty awesome. And um, what's an event that maybe you are a club you're involved with or something that you like to do on campus when you get a spare moment? Um, I'm pretty heavy into like the sciences and stuff. So um, I'm not actually in the, in the science club because, you know, I really don't have a lot of, a lot of free time with basketball and everything. It's such a long season, but um, yeah, I spend a lot of time like in the labs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And what would be one of your favorite memories playing basketball? And this is not, um, or just a memory that comes to mind. And this can be from the time you were first able to hold a basketball to now. Um, I have so many, but um, I think one of the best feelings is the conference championship that we just won. Probably just because, 
you know, like I said, we were the underdogs. We were not supposed to win. And so just getting to, you know, prove everybody wrong in that sense, everybody that had doubted us, it was really such a great feeling for me. And, you know, that's something we've been, I've been working towards for as long as I can remember. And it's going to feel very surreal when um, I get my ring this fall. <laughs> nice. And, um, and um, what would be a, a favorite place to eat you have? And this can be, Actually, two answers on that one, maybe in the Pikeville area and um, the other, um, you know, just maybe overall. Um, at Pikeville, my favorite place to eat is Peking Hibachi. I love hibachi. And um, overall, I'm, I'm going to go with um, just a home-cooked meal, just like, you know, maybe – maybe some steaks and some mashed potatoes, some corn and green beans, just like a home-cooked meal from my mom. I'm going to go with that. Nice. And what about music? Do you have a particular playlist you listen to before a game? Um, I'm a big country music fan. Um, of, you know, I know some of the some of the rap songs, you know, get you going before a game, but I really don't have a specific playlist that I play, you know, it's just whatever, whatever I'm feeling that day, whatever songs they got playing in the locker room. Yeah. And you, you talked about your faith in God earlier, your faith in Christ and um, talk about that and just whether, because it's something I've heard you mention it in other interviews as well. Yeah. Um, you know, I feel like that's the, that's the center of who I am. That's who I am first and foremost as a Christian. And, I'm I'm proud of that, and um, yeah, I just I give all glory to him because I know that you know I couldn't do anything that I do without him. I've I've been so blessed to be, you know, healthy enough to to play basketball, and I haven't had to miss very many games at all. And I just know that all my talent comes from him, and you know, I give everything, all glory that I get is for him. Yes, and. And what are some of your hobbies um, when you do get a breather? Um, what are some of your hobbies that you like to do or maybe when you're back home for the summer? Yeah, um, I'm a big outdoors person. Um, I love playing with my nephews. I have twin nephews. They're three. So they're really fun right now. And um, I like going to the lake. I like swimming. Um, we ride four-wheelers a lot. I like doing that. You know, just pretty much anything to get me outside. Mhm. Mm and what would be a, a cool fact about yourself? Something that something that not a lot of people know. Um. Probably that I have goats. Actually, we like we raise goats. We um raise them, sell them. I say that's pretty pretty unique. That is neat. Are you like a so, – so you're on a farm then? Yes, yes, I do live on a farm. <laughs> that is that is pretty cool. And last question for you, Allie, are there any shout-outs you'd like to give? Um, I'll just give a shout-out to – we'll just make it general. All my coaches and all my former coaches, all my coaches now and – all my teammates and all my teammates now, I, I couldn't be where I am without all of them. So I'm I'm grateful for everybody. All right, Allie, want to say thank you for coming on. Allie Stone, Women's Basketball Coaches Association, WBCA All-America at the NAIA level. Big honor for sure. And we want to say thank you all for tuning in and listening to this one. And I want to say God bless you, and we will see, see you soon.